Hey guys, so um, I am at the T8 in Wheat Ridge, Colorado. Uh, I had not planned on coming this direction uh, yesterday, or the last video that I made and posted up. This was not my plan. My plan originally was to go down to, um, let's see, I was going to go from uh, Idaho down to, what was it? It was... Uh, Springfield, Utah, which I did. I did that last night, okay? I was going from Springfield, Utah to Ute, Colorado, basically the Ute lands in Colorado. There's a uh, casino truck stop there that um, I was going to stop at. That was as far as I was going to get. Well, I could have gotten further. I could have gotten to Bloomfield, New Mexico, or whatever. Um, and then from there, I was going to go to Amarillo, and then from Amarillo, I was going to go to Denton. Well, uh, Gallup is closed. Gallup, New Mexico, now what does that have to do with my route? It doesn't really... Um, but I, I have heard from the news and everything that the, uh, the Northwest, um, part of New Mexico is actually pretty, um, it, it's, it's, you know, pretty bad as far as the COVID-19 is concerned. So, uh, I know they had stuff shut down, like, like Gallup, you can't get into Gallup, you can't even stop for fuel is my understanding that you may be able to, but my understanding is you can't. So they've got everything blocked off. I haven't been through there. I don't know, but that's the rumor. And what I was worried about was going down um like 491 191 491 into uh new mexico and then ending up being in uh the north west part of new mexico and finding roads that are closed because of covid19 and uh, having to backtrack or go another direction so um i kind of opted instead to go up over to take 70 into denver and go that way so that's what i did um I managed to make it to Wheat Ridge, Colorado. I had seven hours and 40 minutes this morning because I'm running on recaps. And uh, I had seven hours and 40 minutes this morning to drive. And um, I made it here in seven hours and 36, no, 34 minutes. So uh, I have six minutes left. So I just just barely squeaked it out. And that includes a uh, pre-trip this morning. So just barely squeaked it out uh, under the wire. I had literally for drive time today to do anything, I have six minutes. So I have to be off the rest of the day. Um, it's about 3.30 uh, here in Wheat Ridge. Uh, the TA here is open. Uh, one of the things um, that we've been dealing with out here is the TAs and the Petros have been closing their restaurants on the inside. The Country Prides, the Iron Skillets, they're all closed. Um, if they have a fast food restaurant, generally that's open. Um, if they have two fast food restaurants, generally only one is open. Um, what I'm finding out is, is generally there's... There are a lot of Popeye's chicken places, and unfortunately, my body doesn't agree with Popeye's. So, I can't have Popeye's, which is kind of annoying. Um, so, I, I've, I've been here to this country pride before. They're pretty good, or whatever, but um, I want to try to help the local economy. So, I, I ordered from DoorDash. So, there's some Philly cheesesteak coming in my truck here in a little bit. Um, all I've had today is coffee, pretty much. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to Philly cheesesteak, let me tell you. So... Anyway, um, so that's, that's on its way. Uh, so that's how I ended up here in, in Wheat Ridge instead. So tomorrow, I don't know where I'm going to go to. I'm aiming for probably Chillicothe because I love Chillicothe, uh, Texas. It's one of my favorite truck stops to stop at. And, uh, so I'll probably go down there. That's a, a Caprice PPV, one of the new ones. Chevrolet made a, okay, a little bit of car history. Side note, rabbit trail. As a friend would say. Um, they brought the Caprice back. I have a 96 Caprice. They brought the Caprice back um, in 2012 or 2014, somewhere in there. Um, and offered it as only a uh, fleet car. So you could get it as like a... Um, you could only get it as a police package. And so one just pulled up and it's being run as a taxi right now. It's obviously an old police car. So, um, But apparently they're really wicked fast. They, had a, they were rear-wheel drive. They were front engines. Uh, they were built on the Holden Commodore frame, and um, they uh, like they got something like 350 horsepower or something like that. So it's ridiculous. I want one <laughs> very badly. But anyway, uh, so anyway, to go back to what I was saying, so that's that's how I ended up here in Wheat Ridge. Um, I'll probably end up at Chillicothe tomorrow and then deliver on Sunday. So this was actually a little bit faster. Gets me a little bit closer to home. And then the truck's going to go in the shop. What's the truck going to go in the shop for, Big Mike? Well, let me tell you. Uh, I've been having a little bit of trouble with my DEF system. And um, the main problem that I'm having is that if I'm chugging up a hill, 
uh, under kind of a heavy load or a little bit of a, of a load or whatever, I will get a, a check engine light, just a, just a, a glowing amber light on the truck that um, indicates that there is something, there's a, there's a code in the system and I need to check it. So it doesn't mean that you have to stop. You just have to stop and check it at some point. I'll check it. It'll say something about the EEC, which is the DEF system. And uh, in talking to the, my mechanic and everything, it uh, talked about how, uh, we talked about how DEF um, can clog. There's a filter in there, and DEF can clog the filter after a while, especially if it goes bad. Um, and apparently DEF goes bad. So, And then the doser can get a little, uh, get a little clogged as well. So um, that is on the roster of things to do. The other thing is... I'm at 400 and like 30, let's see, 431 or 32,000 miles. Pay no attention to this beeping. Let's see. Well, if it'll pull it up here in a second. Turn that off. So, 434,205 miles. So, around 500,000 miles, we need to be thinking about the DPF filters and having them cleaned. I do, I am idling quite a bit lately. Uh, especially in the warmer climates, because I've been I've been turning the truck off actually, and uh, let me show you. I I bought a set of these, so these are really great because you can put them up in the window like this, and then you have you can have the windows open at night. So especially in in a little bit warmer climate. So if it gets down in the 50s or 60s or something like that, it's a good it's a good thing to have. I've got one for both windows. They come in a set, and I think they were about 50 bucks to do it. You gotta um. They have uh, these little breakaways, um, these little breakaway pieces, so they'll break away, but you gotta buy the right one that was made for your truck. This almost fits, um, and so it's worth kind of, it's worth having. Um, I'll turn, I'll open the vents in the back. So I've been trying to not idle the truck, I've been trying to just shut the truck down at night, and uh, that saves me on, on fuel mileage and everything. <clears throat> it kind of helps me make a little bit more money. Um, so that's one of the things I'm doing. My APU has not been working. I uh, developed a coolant leak and I just shut it off and turn it off. The other thing is it keeps throwing a belt. So that also is probably something that I'll, I'll probably have looked at. But the DPF filters probably are getting pretty full. Probably need to be cleaned. I'm going to let them check them and see. Uh, and if they are, you know, if they are bad enough, clean them. If they are not bad enough, just put them back in. So that's kind of on the agenda. The other thing that's on the agenda for when I get home, um, my uh, the Mercedes is in the shop. It was leaking transmission fluid when I bought it. Um, it's still leaking transmission fluid, but apparently it's worse now. So um, it's gone to the transmission shop to try to figure out why it's leaking transmission fluid. So I was actually towed off today. I'm not even there. Uh, but I had, uh, my mother was there. And she was able to, to meet the tow truck and, and watch it go bye-bye for a little while. So I'm expecting a phone call back about that. Um, probably going to seal up, do my best to seal up the 84 van. It's got a cracked window or, or it's missing a wing window on, on the window here. Um, if you don't know what a wing wi window is, it's a smoker's window. Uh, if you know what a, a smoker's window is, it's a vent window. If you know what a vent window is, look it up. So, um, anyway, so, uh, it's missing a window, so I got to seal it up. So it, uh, it's sealed and everything because we I was getting some hornets in there, hornets wafts. I don't want murder hornets in my in my van. So, um, anyway, so that's on the agenda of things to do. The other one is uh, I might call and have the um, uh, there, there's a window missing on a suburban. Somebody broke into it at one point, so I might call and have that done. And then uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's kind of the plan at this point. Everything's going well. Um, it's been really interesting, kind of uh, running this. Um, it's this weird uh, uh, couple of hours. It's like, how many hours you got today? Uh, I can go this far. Okay. And so I go that far. And uh, yesterday was a great day because I was able to, um, and I, I might edit this and put some pictures up, but I was able to go to uh, Molly's again um, and have uh, their pork chops. I had the pork chop breakfast this time. Uh, it was really good, as always. Wasn't as good as the last time, but it was really good. Um, and then... Uh, I managed to swing through a, uh, I, oh, that was it there in Snowville. I stopped over at the, um, I went across the street basically, or just down the street to the, to the TA, not the TA, the pilot flying J that's there and got a shower real quick. And then I went on down to Springville, Utah and I got Springville, Utah around five o'clock. So that was really nice. Um, glad you guys are enjoying the scenery videos. I do have another one that I have already made. 
Um, and it's in my computer, and I have to edit it. And I'm going to send that one out next week, and that one is from uh, Florida to Washington. So it's got some pretty good scenery in it. Um, I am working on one from Washington back down to Texas. Unfortunately, I got distracted apparently somewhere in Idaho and forgot all about taking video. So I've got uh, one video of going up cabbage in Oregon, and that's it. And then uh, I didn't get any video of Stoquolamy, apparently, uh, which kind of pisses me off. But uh, I did get video going into Snoqualmie, not coming out of Snoqualmie. So I think I was distracted then, too. Probably on the phone with somebody. And that's In my mind, that's what's going on as I was on the phone with somebody. So um, what you're going to get most of is probably leaving Utah this morning and going from Utah to Texas um, on, on, that, on the dash cam. So um, just be aware of that. Anyway, uh, is there anything else that I want to talk to you guys about? I don't think so. Just, you know, just be safe out there. Do what you can. You know, the economy's starting to open back up and everything, and that's really great. We're kind of starting to see a little life um, going back into uh, the industry on our on our end. Um, I know that uh, Georgia, I got a friend that picked up a load in Boise, Idaho, going to Georgia. It's not paying a whole lot, but it's paying better than, than he thought he was going to be able to find. And when he gets to Georgia, um, apparently there's a bunch of loads available well ahead of, you know, him being there. So he's going to be checking, you know, he's going to be checking as he goes to Georgia. So that's good news. Um, I know that there were a couple of places. I know I checked Albuquerque a couple of weeks ago. I was going to leave here, I think, go down to Albuquerque. You know, somebody called me about a load from here to Albuquerque, and I didn't take it because when I looked up Albuquerque, there were two loads available. And that was, like, for tomorrow. So um, with that being the case, um I, uh, you know, I decided not to take that load. So it's nice to see loads on the board. It's nice to see prices starting to go back up a little bit. Um, it's nice to see that. And, and I'm just, I'm, you know, fingers crossed. It just keeps going in the right direction. So uh, if you're out and about, you know, do your part. Social distance as much as possible. Wear a mask. Um, I've got one. I've got a couple of masks. I've got mine that I already made. And then I've got this one here that I picked up at a TA in Arizona, I think, and it just covers your mountain, you know, like this, and then it goes, you know, up over the top and everything, so it's, um, this works out really well, and actually, I, I, I kind of, I don't like my, the mask that I made, so I've been using this more, the mask I made did not come out the way that I wanted it to, so a friend of mine did make me a mask, and, and uh, I'm hoping to be able to pick it up from her uh, this next week, so anyway, um, yeah, just, you know, keep your distance, go out and enjoy yourself, but wear a mask if you can. Um, wash your hands as much as possible. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I want to show you guys this. So, look. Check it out. Oh. It's hand sanitizer. I found it at a truck at the truck stop in Snowville. So, I bought two of these little bottles. When was the last time you saw it? It's been seven or eight weeks since you were able to buy hand sanitizer at the truck stops. So, that's actually that's pretty good. That's a pretty good little thing. So, um, but anyway, that's it. I've talked enough at this point. I've gone three minutes over my timeline. So, but uh, anyway... Hand sanitizer. Anyway, y'all keep it up. Keep your side up. See you guys down the road.